some preventative maintenance. Basically, we gotta re rebuild the whole end wall. We got one more project that we're gonna get started on. First, we're gonna get these mats out of here so we can work, but when I talk about preventative maintenance, We're gonna have to do some preventative maintenance. So, these walls on the end of this building are shot. And as much as I hate to admit it, when we, when we sold these barns, these are Lester buildings, and they have a design, they have a design flaw. Now, Lester's won't tell you that, but the company that I work for that built these are not a Lester dealer anymore. And this is one of the reasons why this design, instead of having like a piece of flashing where the water has to come away from the building, they just had that, they just had that box trim with the idea that the water would just run right down. And this, this plywood had like a, had like a, almost like powder coat to it and it was very durable the problem is all the caulking failed and when the caulking failed it would draw moisture and over time when it draws moisture every seam starts to go this building's 13 years old and these end walls are shot and so the Amish crew that did the roof on our barn and actually built these barns originally. I've hired them to come and they're gonna tear, slide the fans out, rebuild the wall with a steel exterior, and then wrap all the openings with that, with that adhesive foil like we do today, and install that piece of trim the way my new buildings are. So even the building that's right north of this, we're at the two barn site, it, we changed the design, but back when we started, building these no bueno so anyway tomorrow I'm gonna spend we're gonna spend the day getting all the power loose from these fans and getting everything prepped so when they come the next day they can get it everything done at one end one day and then we'll do the other end the next day but first we better get these mats out of the way After a very tedious balancing act, I got the mats moved around the corner of the building. And so now I'm gonna take half these pigs and I'm gonna put them in here and then push these off and we'll be good to go. this all cleared out and this this is the state of things not much not much left there stainless steel nails that did a lot of good uh, so we're gonna take the shutters out and that conduit loose and unwire all the fans and then I'll probably go ahead and take these take these brackets off it's one less thing that the carpenter's got to do
okay. It's a little windy, but uh, I think we're ready. So I've got all the conduit dropped away from the wall. I just got it temporary hanging on the ceiling. That water line's loose. All the cords are pulled back into the fans. Um, the only thing I gotta do is in the morning I gotta unwire this Kurt machine. Uh, but I'm gonna let it run tonight because it'll ring, it'll bring the curtains up. Tomorrow's gonna be a pretty nice day. So should be able to just drop the curtains, take the cables loose. Um, they'll frame this section of the of the wall first and we get the curtain machine back up and then I can get it hooked up. And the fans aren't a big deal because uh, it's warm right now, but not warm enough that we need the tunnel fans and it's gonna get cool. So it'll just run in natural. So um, if we get along good tomorrow, then I'm gonna start tearing the west end out because uh, they're gonna do the exact same thing down there. So uh, there you go. That's the long and short of it. I'm gonna wire a panel up in this alley. So just in case somebody picks the lock, which shouldn't happen, but you never know. So I'm gonna put one of these gates up and wire it so that worst case scenario, they can't get down here. And then I'm gonna call it quits for today. of progress are turning and turning turning and burning right now so turning hard a lot of progress has been made dad's gonna kind of give you the lowdown on everything have you showed him what all this is <laughs> well so basically we got to re rebuild the whole end wall because the bottom of it was all rotted out so we're re all new framing that's this material here and there's enough for both ends because we have to do the west end sometime so new lumber, new lumber, then this is new steel. So the old wall was plywood. The new wall is like the North building. It's steel. And this is your insulation. These big round things. Those are the, those are the cones that go on the outside of the fan. They had to take those off because they had to pull the fans in 
you can see them standing up there and there's one there's one thing that's a little different about how we're doing it from the way it was and that is this built when this was framed originally this was all two by four so it fit flush on this stem wall and as you can see this sticks over an inch and a half so we're framing it with two by six that's stronger it gives us more uh more for the fans to basically more strength and then it hangs over and we've got a piece of trim that's going to cover that and then down here on the bottom we're actually going to get we're going to insulate this stem wall on the outside so it doesn't sweat on the inside so um that's really the big change those are the fans those are the fans that came out we're reusing them we're putting them right back in the door we're going to reuse the door basically it's just a matter of getting rid of the that's what we had you can see the bottom this is our framing because it got moisture in it the plywood so the top was fine but the top doesn't help you the belly would have just gotten shorter so anyway replacing all that and gonna make it better than new you must be really special they even wrote your name <laughs> yeah, i guess one and only that's how they keep it straight they know nobody else is gonna say all oh, that pile of stuff is for torque and nobody's gonna go well which torque there's only one only so. the torque that makes toilet paper and paper rolls paper towels yep if only i could get a penny a wipe oh man we'd have we have it made. We'd be shitting in high cotton, right? We'd yeah. have the toilet paper to wipe with. Once again, we've got the Amish crew doing this. So this is actually the same crew that built this building originally 13 years ago. Not all of them, obviously, but the guy that's running this crew, he was, he was a lot younger when they did this the first time. They've actually built all my hog buildings. They're the ones that redid the barn. They're from Bloomfield, Iowa. And we seem to get a lot of questions about whether they're really Amish, whether they can use tools, how they make this work. And the way they make it work is they run everything on air. So in the, in the trailer that they're pulling, there's a big air compressor. And here, I'll show you over here. So that's obviously a nailer. This is an air powered saw. This is an air powered impact wrench. So everything they do they run on air and that's how they get it done um, they have a guy on the crew that's not amish he's the one that drives them um, runs the telehandler he runs the telehandler if they and if, if they use a telehandler the way that works is the church the church pays the lease on the telehandler they have a non-amish person run it and the reason they own that or lease it they don't actually own it they lease it is because it's the it's for the betterment of the community and that's how and every every parish or every group of Amish have a bishop and that bishop is ultimately the one that decides what they can have or what they can not have so as an example this crew from Bloomfield up until a few years ago well up until about 10 years ago they didn't have gas lights in their houses and then the bishop decided they could have gas lights so all the houses down there they plumbed them for lp and they all have gas lights now and it's stuff like that but anyway that's the story on our amish the wind's picked up since since this afternoon but we're getting there slowly but surely they got it framed and they got the insulation in but they couldn't get it all done in one day and amish they had to go home by 3 30 right yeah they just backed up and left so we got to put these shutters in and dad already got the curtain cables hooked up again right because well they i wouldn't be so bad but they didn't even put the corner brackets i told him i said you got to get the corner brackets on the building so that i can crank these curtains up it's gonna be like 20 degrees tomorrow right yeah and they're like yeah 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 i don't think they knew what a corner bracket was so they just took off <laughs>
All right, we got it locked up for the night. Shutters are on, doors on. This is our, since we don't have a wall to put this um, curtain machine on, it's just gonna have to stay like this for the night. We'll probably, we'll probably sturdy it up a little bit better than that, but cable, cable. That's what will crank the curtain down or up, so. Kinda in this weird spot. Until they're done, this is kind of how it's going to look. But they're going to come back, not tomorrow, but the next day to finish.